In this tutorial, we're going to talk about working with outlines. So as you can see on our workspace here, we've, we have uh, Texas. What we're going to do now is assign an outline to Texas. So, notice from the left-hand side of our toolbar, I'm hovering my mouse now over the Outline Pen tool. So, of course, if we select that, we have the opportunity to choose our point size, we can control the color of our outline, and we can make all of our changes. So what I'm going to do now is we'll assign a four-point outline, and it's going to be in black. So you'll notice how Texas just increased in terms of weight, but what I'm going to do now to easily control the color of an outline is I'm going to right mouse click on a color on my color palette from the right hand side. So I'm going to go to a light gray here and right mouse click, and that will control the color of your outline. And let's do red to make that stand out. So uh, if, uh, if you left mouse click, that will control the fill. So if I double click on a color, uh, by left mouse clicking on a, on a fill, it's going to change that color. If you right mouse click one time on a color, it's going to uh, control the outline color. Now I want you to notice something very interesting. I'm going to zoom in here, and I'm going to draw, uh, or excuse me, drag a guideline from the toolbar on the left hand side, and I'm going to position that where the blue outline meets the gray fill. And what I'm going to do now is go to the wireframe view. So notice this. Notice when I go back to the enhanced mode, Notice how you don't see that outline in the wireframe view mode. You only see one shape there, one object. Now in Corel Draw, anytime you assign an outline, it actually behaves more like a bitmap, albeit it has vector properties. So sometimes it's really important to get access to your uh, outline stroke to make modifications. In fact, there's a really clever way to, to output uh, outline-based fonts without a fill. So let's talk about that. What I can do now is go to the Arrange drop-down menu, and notice anytime you have an object selected that has an outline, you'll have an option here that says Convert Outline to Object. So what we're going to do is we're going to make that outline now appear as an object. So I'm going to go ahead and make that selection, and you'll notice something new when we go to the wireframe view once more. You'll see that outline now appears. Now I want to point one other thing out. I think this is pretty important. I'm going to drag another guideline here to the... Uh, we have a guideline on the left-hand portion of the outline and then one on the interior portion. So notice this, when you assign an outline to an object, it's going to put half of the outline on the left-hand portion and then half on the interior portion. So we chose a four-point outline. We have two points on the outside of the fill and two points on the inside of the fill. And I think that's an important thing to recognize. So in fact, that becomes a little more clear. Once we convert an outline to an object, we have full control over it. So do you see how I can now separate it and remove it from our text entirely? Now, I mentioned a moment ago that this is a really great way to create outline-based uh, fonts. So this is kind of like a really cool text effect. In fact, if I color my page, and I'm going to do that by double-clicking my rectangle tool, notice how it drew basically a box around my 8.5 by 11 page. Now I can go ahead and click on a color, and it will assign a color to my page. So let's do yellow so this really stands out. Notice how that outline now appears as a sort of transparent area. So if you want to do a one color print, and you really want the uh, substrate to kind of show through, um, and use just the outline uh, as far as text, it's a really quick way to make a, a text effect out of just ordinary fonts. So that's really uh, working with outlines 101. Uh, we can convert an outline to an object. We need to recognize that half of the outline will go on the exterior of the fill and the balance will go in the interior. And that's important if you know that you need a very specific point size on your design. You can go ahead and make that change. Now there's one other thing. I'm going to hit Control Z and go back in time here uh, before we converted this outline to an object. One important thing is uh, locking your outline to your shape. So if you want to make a radical change to this, like scale it way down or scale it way up, sometimes you're going to have some issues with outlines in Corel unless you right mouse click, you go to properties, and once your property uh, palette comes up, you'll have the option to click on the outline pen tool. Notice how there's two little options here. One says behind fill, so notice how we just moved the outline behind our fill. So right now we had two points on the outside, two on the inside, Right now, we're just going to have two on the outside, so it's not really competing with our fill. Now, we can also click Scale with Image. Now, that means that I can shrink this guy down, really, really uh, make a minute uh, change here. And it flipped upside down, didn't mean to do that. Uh, and I can blow this way up, and the outline will remain constant. 
And you'll notice if you don't do that and you make those radical changes, oftentimes your, uh, your outline and your fill won't change uh, dynamically to one another. Now we can also, in this uh, you know, object properties, we can continue to change the color. We can modify the point size if that's necessary. So if I want to ratchet up that point size and make it a lot larger, now that it's behind my fill, it doesn't look awkward. But you can see if I leave it uh, you know, half on, half off, you can see the difference in, in terms of stylistics uh, between the two. So that is Working with Outlines 101.